Hello everyone, how's it going? Today we are playing Firewatch. Let's get started. Let's see, we're going to do an empty game. Boulder, Colorado, 1975. You see Julia. Uh, about our age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. Oh, you're drunk. Let's see. I feel like the you, you're pretty is like, hey, I'm drunk. <laughs> so let's go with, uh, so what's your, you know, major? You slur the word major and it smells like cores. You give an awkward smile. Evolutionary biology, she says, and I'm a professor. Cool, you reply. What's yours? She asks. She sniffs the air. Toxicology? Was that a burn, you ask? She says, definitely. Worried, she hurt your feelings. She asks if you want, you know, to split a burger. One week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. Ooh, elevator. What is this? Oh god, are they gonna force me to use a mouse? Fine. I was using my gamepad. Alright. Looks like we're in a parking garage of some sort. Wait, let's look around. What's there anything around here? No? Not a sort of the not a single darn thing? Okay. I'm cool with that. You date... Ooh, wow. You date for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. That's great. That's good. is good. You move in, you share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You two drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about, you know, anywhere. Julia wants to get a dog. Alright. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia's in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Nothing bad could happen to Julia while, <clears throat> while walking this dog. It's a badass. Um, I think the shepherd, but... I don't know, she, she's like in love with the beagle, so let's go with the beagle. Look, it's a good dog, and a week later you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. That just cute. Nineteen seventy nine. You walk out on the deck. It's summer, nine thirty p.m., and the heat still radiates off the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Kids? Well, they're not very smart or good at much saying if listen I'm saying if you and I have some a couple little idiots um yeah yeah sure whatever in that case we should probably get married oh god so this story is you know it's like their life so far so that's that's really cute 
Uh, yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably the best for the best that their parents get hitched. You say she's absolutely right. See what's going on. What's this? Two forks. Okay. It reminds me of Twin Peaks, but all right. Is there like a "you are here" thing? Let's see. Okay. Cool. Cool. It's a Thursday night, and Julie is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by the minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. She's not quite drunk, but she's been clearly having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. Shit. Uh, see, I'm the kind of person that I won't get mad. I'll ignore instead, so... Ignore. You don't touch each other all night. The next day you feel guilty for being able to, for you feel guilty for being so angry and ask her about her evening. She says it was great. You hold on to a tiny pillow resentment. You make some coffee and go to work. Okay. Julia still likes to draw. This is 1981. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. Um, I feel like what I would do is pose and flex like He-Man. I mean, that's something that I would definitely do. You look awesome. <laughs> okay, this is charming. Okay, let's see where we're going. Okay, so we're going to Two Forks Fire Lookout, eight miles. Alright. Space bar. Let's do it! Nineteen eighty-two. During the summers you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. The Beagle. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from far away places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. Oh shit. Bucket gets kicked. But but fuck the dog! Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. <clears throat> you confront the attacker. Dude, you kick my dog, you're getting your goddamn face beat in. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. Julie has to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay. You don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. So that was my consequence of choosing the beagle, I think, over the uh, shepherd. So... That's really interesting. 1984. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Oh, man. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale's in Connecticut, 2,000 miles away. It's a great job, associate department chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Oh, man. See, if it was me, I would say, okay, let's go together. Um, it's interesting. Um... See, commuting back and forth, that would just be a pain in the ass, honestly, but the thing is that if that's really what she wants, then why not? So let's go with that. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. She says that'll be hard, but she'll do it if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. Oh goodness, 
1985, Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having quote-unquote an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. Oh, dude. That's weird. She was found crying in the stairwell. No, no, we, we should talk to someone about it. After seeing multiple doctors and having many tests, they are worried that Julia might be suffering from early onset dementia. She is 41. You both decide to keep it a secret for now. Jeez. this journal <laughs> what the heck okay so that was he man okay bucket is getting older julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house a week later she goes back to the university julia's affliction gets worse in 1987 she can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason. It has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn child little idiots. Other days you get a complete stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. You tell her family. They are crushed and begin to make trips to and from uh, their home in Australia to visit her. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24-hour care, a home. Assist with you for a couple of months. Oh, man. I, I couldn't do that. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her and she can't do anything without you. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer, college basketball in the winter, drinking then too. You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. Oh, man. Well, if you put a chair in front of the bedroom door and she tries to get out, she'll just freak the fuck out. But if you trust that she sleeps like a, like a rock, then more likely than not, something will happen. But... I don't know. These are two choices that basically lead to the same thing. Let's try this one. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Street. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Sheila, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. Nineteen eighty-nine. One night, you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a point ten or are taken to jail for the night. 
You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then they tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming up and you see an ad in the paper for a job. You take it. Enter the lookout tower, all right. Turn on the power. Let's see, how does one do that? Cook bug, oh wait, generator switch, yep. There we go, power. Hello, Two Forks Tower. Uh, hey, radio person. Hold left shift to activate radio. Um, hello? Whoever this is? It's Henry, right? Yeah. I'm Delilah. Yeah, that's what the guy said on the phone. So, what's wrong with you? Excuse me? People take this job to get away from something. So, what's wrong? What's wrong with you? It's a great idea. Go ahead. Look, I just hiked for two days, so I don't really follow whatever it is you're doing right now. You take a stab at what's wrong with me. Fine. Then can I like, sleep forever? Sure, buddy. Okay, now go ahead. You've killed three ex-husbands. Yep, yep. That's sarcastic. Okay, uh, you've... Killed three husbands. You're a black widow and you're just out here until the heat dies down and then you'll kill again. Ooh, very good. Bravo, Henry. Okay, I sleep now? Not quite. Now you. Okay, good night. Bye. Let's see. I don't know anything about you. But maybe you just really like trees. Maybe it's... <gasps> Gosh, maybe it's a borderline fetish. A tree fetish. Good night. <laughs> Good night. Welcome to the job. What the hell, Delilah? Good morning, Henry. Well, I guess good afternoon. <laughs> you probably slept like a rock. Anyway, uh, there's still a few hours of daylight to get some work in. I can see you at your desk, so call me when you're ready. Dude, you're creepy. Guess I slept in. Hey, sorry. Guess I slept in. You got a relaxing, what, 14 hours of sleep? Whew. Yeah, Jesus. I guess it's what, 6? Six? 6.45. Whoops. Don't worry about it. That hike puts everyone out of commission for a day or two. But now that you're up, let me quickly get you acquainted with the job. There's a thing in the middle of your room with a round map on it. Do you see it? Okay, yeah, I see it. This is the Osborne Firefinder, invented in 1914 by W.B. Osborne? You use this to spot, you guessed it, fi- What the fuck? What is it? Nothing, um, you, uh, you use this to- Oh, fuck me! Good God, language, lady. Out your west-facing window, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Are those fucking fireworks? Whoa, 
That's not legal, right? Uh, no. You need to get down there right now and stop them. Fire danger is through the fucking roof. Is that really my job? Your job is whatever I say it is. Look, the closest ranger is like two days away. Go down there and set them straight. Can I write him a ticket? Do I write him a ticket? Easy there, Dirty Harry. Well? Get going. You'll probably need a rope to get down the shale between you and the lake, if I remember right. There should be one in the supply box on the way. The code is 1234. It's actually that for all of them. Secure. Shut up. <laughs> secure. Yeah, yeah. Super secure. Now what? What is it he was writing? I keep trying to look at it, but nothing. Okay. Yep, grab your backpack. Check out our map. Holy shit, where are we? Well, there we are. Where is it we have to go? Is what, west? Wait, cash 306, so that's that way. Let's see, I'm trying to get oriented here. Okay, I think I'm going the right way. Double check. Yep. Doing good. map. This just seemed like it was, you know, just a straight uh, shot, basically. So that's fine. Let's be double sure. Let's see, let's zoom in, let's zoom in. Yep. So far, so good. I think that's it. Password of one, two, three, four. Who the hell uses that? Oy. I found the supply box. Great. That's it. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. Let's see, map. A note. Let's see, 7786. Ron. Hey man. Guy couldn't take it, so I locked up his lookout and put some stuff in the box. Found one of those bars he liked. Hiking into that park, but let's get fucked when I'm back. Dave. Alright, cool. Let's see, uh, keep. Let's see, granola bar. Uh, I'll eat it, fuck. Look at that old rope. Let's deal with these uh, troublemakers here. And they are. Let's see. Ooh. There we go. Now, where are these troublemakers? I'm right here. Interesting. Now let's follow a path and see where it goes. And also we might see the fireworks and that will be uh, 
good indication. Definitely hear them. There they are. Gotta use our senses, kids. Oh, I can't jump over these. Okay. What is that? Oh, that thing. Okay. Oh, I see what he's doing. Okay. The dude. No, no, no. Oh, son of a bitch. Damn it, Henry. 10 out of 10. Graceful as fuck. Poor climbing accent. Yeah, I guess I should. Hey. What the hell's wrong with you? My rope snapped coming down the shale slide. You didn't break anything, did you? No, I think I'll make it. Well, be careful for Christ's sake. It is a hell of a nice camping spot down here by the lake. I haven't been down there in years, but yeah, Jonesy Lake area is perfect. Finding a bunch of empty beer cans, they threw them all over hell. The idiots down at the lake? Yeah, them. I just found where they're hanging out. Hmm. Let's see what we got here. Backpacks, okay. They left their packs tied up here. Don't fuck with them. The last thing we need is some hikers filing a report about harassment. True, true. Oh, look, they decided to have a campfire, too. You know, they color-coded the fire danger signs in case people were illiterate. But I guess that doesn't take into account just plain stupid, does it? I like this Delilah chick. Yeah, stamp that shit out. Okay, I guess it's adequately stamped out. I left half a bottle of whiskey. Decent stuff. Drunk pyromaniacs. Fucking great. Found the fireworks. They didn't even try to hide them. Uh, well, confiscate them. Confiscated. No, where the fuck are the kids? What the hell? Why is there a bunch of clothes? Well, they left their clothes out to dry. It looks like uh, two people. Well, uh, what if they're naked? Won't that be exciting? Look, they're obviously still there, so tell them off and then head back. Alright, where the shit are they? Around here? Oh god. Oh god. I found a bra. A nudie pyromaniac. Remain professional. Hello. Well, I'm not going to keep it. Okay. Oh, boy. Uh, there are, uh, panties. There are what? I don't want to say that word again. Why? Because you're 12? There's, a. Uh, ooh. Yes? There are two naked ladies out here. Can you handle that? <laughs> Come on, I like naked ladies, same as anyone, but there's, you know... Two? Yeah. 
I know this will be tough for you, but try to pick your tongue up off the ground and do your job. Okay. Jesus Christ. This is just asking for a bad situation. Oh God. Ugh. I found them in the lake. Skinny dipping. Yeah. Is that a guy over there? <laughs> oh boy. Enjoy dealing with that. Oh Jesus. They are drunk. What up, though? Okay, so I'll just go over to him? No. Oh, I'll probably have to turn this off. Now I'll probably make him be like, what the fuck, man? Oh, stereo! Whoa, hey, put that down! Seriously, it was expensive! Fucking cool it with the fireworks! Thank you! Now, leave us alone! You're a creep! Total creep! Go get a girlfriend, creep! Can we just get out of here? You're gross. You're just some sad man out in the woods. Dude. What? Why did they run that way if they're closer this way? Whatever, man. Hey, that go okay? It went fine. Hopefully, there won't be any more trouble. Good. Thanks for going down there. No problems. All right, let's get the fuck back. Fucking kids. Hardy reported this meadow, yo. Hey, I'm back near that big rock outcropping, but not sure how to get back. I'd head west, back towards the lake, and then turn north towards the canyon. Do what? Wait, I gotta go this way? Is that what they're saying? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. What is? out at the lake and then boop yep. easy peasy <laughs> yeah hop on over that shit Henry Doesn't look like a bad place. So I have a bit of a confession to make. All right, what's up? What is it? Um. I was, I was drunk last night when I welcomed you to the job. Yeah, well, you're not the first boss to be guilty of that. I know, I just, I know I can get a little pushy, you know, putting you on the spot about uh, why you're out here and stuff. Not a big deal. It's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll keep that sort of a thing to, uh, to a minimum. Anyway, let me know when you get back to your lookout. Will do. Will do, Delilah. Hey, I heard some thunder. Yeah, I've got eyes on a storm out to the north. Well, that's bad, right? Because of the lightning? It just means we'll be busy. Hurry home and 
Try not to get hit by lightning. Yeah, I'm not sure I got a lot of choice in getting struck down. Especially not with your electric personality. Jesus Christ. Ugh. Mm, I see my joke did not spark your sense of humor. Oh my god, Delilah. Ugh. What, you're not enjoying our current conversation? Jesus Christ. Oh my god. Oh my god, lady. The, the arc of our budding friendship. <laughs> Let's keep going. Let's keep going. Oh, oh, oh. How exactly are you in charge? Aw, Henry, that's a good one. You satisfied? <laughs> yes. God damn it. Let's open the supply cache. One. Two. Three. And four. Flashlight. Might need that. Ah! Son of a bitch. A horn. There's a horn or an antler or whatever. Well, antlers are made of bone and horns are made of the same stuff as your fingernails. I guess this is a bone. Antler. A ranger must have found it this spring. Okay. No use for that. What's in this cave down here? In Thunder Canyon? Thunder Canyon? Hey, I didn't name it. <laughs> but in the cave? I don't know, rocks? NFS tells people not to go too far in there. It's pretty dangerous. So... So, I say, fuck it. You're a grown man, you can go where you want. Great. I used to go caving with someone back in Colorado. She loved it. Might be great to explore it sometime this summer. Well, that could be fun. Obviously, be very careful. It doesn't seem that dangerous. Whoa, whoa! Oh, no! Henry! Seriously, it's completely fine in here. God damn it. <laughs> Hello? It looks like the path leads through the cave. Back in the cave, huh? Man, I don't need to lose another lookout in there. Uh, another lookout? They go in, they never come out. Ah, so this is another one of your jokes. Yeah, it is. Yep. Jesus Christ. This cave is gated off. It's to stop spelunkers from dying without getting the keys from the Forest Service office first. Makes sense. Although, Debbie says she lost them like three years ago, so... <laughs> maybe its mysteries are locked away for good. Ah, damn. Yeah, but maybe you can find another one to get your caving kicks in. Oh, this one's so close to home and convenient, though. Aw, oh, sorry, Hank. Huh. I bless the rings down in Africa! Oh my god. Oh! There's some guy out here giving me the creeps. The creeps? Wait, he's looking at you? Is he doing anything else? I... I don't think so. Henry, there's... there's something I... Something someone should have told you about this area. What is it? It's... outside. Come on. The whole thing. And people come and go as they please. It's... it's... it's madness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. I get it. <laughs> Look, bumping into someone in the middle of nowhere is part of the fun. I'm liking this Delilah chick.
Damn it. Ah. Damn it. Uh, well, that trail isn't closed anymore. Oh, really? Yeah, I took care of the black path. Um, it was backbreaking, but, you know, anything for the service. Well, thank you. Anytime. Ah! I don't think there's any fictional character I hate more than Forrest Burns. Henry, as an employee of the Forest Service, that is treason. Yeah, well, he really freaked me out as a kid. He inspired me to spend the bulk of my 30s keeping the wilderness safe. A shrink would have a field day with you. Uh, thanks, Mom. What kind of name is Forrest Burns anyway? Well, that would be a pun, Hank. A glorious pun. I went to junior high with a guy named Royal Butts. Royal? Butts. <laughs> I didn't think anyone had been named Royal since the 1850s. Well, Royal's mom, Flo, was a bit of a trendsetter. Flo Butts? Oh, man, that's even worse. <laughs> yeah, well, it's still better than Forrest Burns. Very true. So this generator is all the power I've got out here. Yep, it doesn't go through much gas, and, well, you don't have much in the way of electronics, so... What about my hair dryer? Oh, I'm sorry. You might just have to make peace with frizzy locks. I could never. <laughs> um, so it's uh, just the outhouse, then, in terms of going to the bathroom? You're a man, Henry. You can go wherever you want. Well, number one, at least. And, uh, full disclosure, I pee wherever I want as well. Hmm. Well, alright. Thanks for the info. Oh, is this home base? Hey. My typewriter. Uh. What can I do for you? Well, my typewriter is on the ground, outside of my tower. You right? Yeah, look, uh, the wind? No. How the hell... You should get inside. Fuck me. Oh, dude, dude. This is not cool, man. It's not cool. Someone broke in. They what? They just, they wrecked the place. Threw my typewriter out the window. Motherfucker. Holy shit. Um, I'll let the Forest Service know what happened. That's some bullshit. Place is trashed. Okay, I put in a call. Okay, thanks. Do you have any idea who would have done this? Maybe that guy I saw in the canyon, but I don't know why the fuck he'd want to mess with my stuff. Well, I'll have the rangers keep an eye out for a man hiking on his own and question him if they find him. I can't believe someone would do this. I worry about bears and fires, and that's about it. And now I've got to worry about some deranged hiker going after lookouts? Great. Uh, okay, in the morning I'm going to call my friend Patty, who works the desk down in Cody. They keep a list of everyone who's officially been in and out of the trailhead since, I don't know, forever, and see if we can get a list of names. We won't get much, but at least if anything else happens, we can refer to it and see if anything comes up. Thanks. I need you to feel safe out here. Don't worry about it. Oh, you can protect yourself, huh? I've done it before. Okay, tough guy. Ooh, day two. Wake up. Hey, wake up. I'm up, I'm up. I'm awake, I'm awake. What's your problem? Our problem. Sorry, our problem. 
That storm knocked out the phone line I used to talk to the service, which means we're cut off. I tried radioing out, and that's not working either. I don't really know why that would be the case. Can I go fix it? Well, you probably can't, but what you can do is hike out to where the wire runs through your area and report back if it's down. Then I can track down a ranger to get someone on it. Okay, I can do that. Where is it? Remember that cave you hiked through yesterday? Yeah, of course. So, you're gonna want to go back there, go through it, and keep going straight to the north when you come out. Will do. Thanks, Hank. It's Henry. What, you don't like Hank? Yeah, I don't like Hank. But thanks rhymes with Hank. Mm, no, it doesn't. Okay, all right. Hmm. That's cool. All right, uh, I'm gonna call this episode here. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.